um, back for another review. You know, I've been, I've been doing recently, I've had Beach Wolf stuff, like G2, like G1, and I thought, what can I, what can I do for something different? I thought, I've done all the roads I've just mentioned. I thought, no, I'm in a gospel of nostalgic sort of me. I've been sort of going a little more clear. I was actually um, transformed my reissue of G1 Soundwave a little while ago, but it didn't seem so steady in, in bot mode, I thought I'll put it back into tape player mode. And as I was looking for my collection, I thought, oh, so I'm going to rearrange myself at some point. I thought, I was just looking through, through the stuff on one of the, basically, basically uh, G1 shelf. And I was looking, I thought, oh, I've never actually done a review with this guy. I thought I had the classic version, I think I sold it to Smith's name? Somebody else, I sold a classic one, I'm not a massive fan of the classics, but I might pick a masterpiece one at some point, but that's, that's a story of another day. And I thought I have done a review of this guy. I've been watching a lot of the G1 cartoon, I've finished season one, but I've now on to I said six or seven of season two, so I'm, I'm working my way back through G1 again. And I, I prefer. Oh, it's a ghost, I don't know why. I prefer this version of the character to how he's portrayed in G1. In the IDW, sorry, version of G1, or the G1 IDW continuity, whatever. I thought I've got. I've only got one toy of him so far. It's going to be something different. It's G1, but. It's one of the three issues I got back. No, I don't have a page on the go. I actually got them in 2006 when I, I think I was in somewhere I was a bit of a, a spending sp splurge and buying bots. And I was up to Toys R Us and I got him, Skywarp, Gra oh, not Gravel, sorry, Inferno. What else did I get? I remember that, who was it? What's gonna bug me now? Yeah, I've got him, Skywarp, Inferno. I think that's it, there's about three or four different characters available at the time, not in the. I don't know what I've done. Anyway, there's about three or four different bots in this flying. They've released 2003 in America, and we've got me 2006 here in the UK. I thought, it's, they're all characters I didn't have at the time, I'd, I'd never had when they originally released. But I want to bolster my ever-growing collection of bots, so I got him. And the bot in question is G1 reissue Pratt. Yeah, I know it's not quite fitting, it's been a while since I've actually transformed it, but I've got basic shape. Now, some of you might like how he's been currently portrayed in OEW, he's basically, uh, yeah, basically described as a prick, he is, I'll grind that one. And maybe I've been too much of a Marvel slash G1 cartoon fanboy, but I like that version of the character, I like that it's voiced by was it Michael Bell, I think, I can't remember now. Where are we? Yeah, Michael Bell. Now, when you when I'm actually watching the G1 cartoon, we all know what happened in the movie. I think that's how Michael Bell did the voice or ridicule lines or what. I just sorry, I just like that version of the character. I don't don't think I need it, but I just like that version of the character. And I, mean, I like his old movie. It's I think it was a it was a where are we? Some weird name I've for it. Uh, that's an 280ZX Turbo Sports Car, or so it's known in Japan, Kurtz with a tear cookie, a Fair Lady Z, or Z, or how you pronounce it in Japan. Anyway, I do, I digress. We all know most of these was like Dark Clone and whatever, all different toy lines, but apart from that, this is a reissue, so it's still all die cast, apart from the rubber, obviously the rubber tiles and plastic sirens. Uh, Lights on the top. 
so it's stuck in it. What I like about this is the detail. I mean, I was reading before it was actually it was like a Japanese. I think it's like a Japanese police symbol or one of the symbols. Same as the bear, the sort of front and the black part. Love your robot symbol. I mean, it's all all the stick is you have to apply yourself. You know, follow the instructions as close as I possibly can. To. And the um, artwork and photos on the back of the box. The one I did struggle with a little bit with the front lights and you can know, start to peel off again. I might um, reapply on some parts of my paint. I think even the, even the headlights, the blue headlights, they're actually stickers, which some of these I think would have been better if they'd been painted on. I think. So a stick, I can't remember if that's a stick or if that's actually painted on actually. And then the rest will see like the highway patrol and the police sign and that one, the robot symbol there. But I mean he's I don't know what the size class were there, but it's, it's still a decent size considering he's made in 84, so he's a good 31 years old, the actual mould anyway. And that's obviously reused for him. The smoke screen. Blue streak, I think I was going to use it three times. But I like it. I mean, where are we? How the details going to point that I can't Even though it's an older mould, the actual like, grills on the front or on the, on the bonnet. What's that? That's going to be detail on there, isn't it? Yeah. But they're all moulded detail. Same as just in front. Where are we? Hang on. Well, underneath the windscreen, I can't say windshield. And the, the weapons you can't see, I'll be a bit of losing. The rocket launcher that go on the side of his head. And yet, I don't know if the G1 version of Smoke Screen did this, but I've noticed the masterpiece with his shoulder cannons, you can actually insert them into, weapon, into vehicle mode. I think he did in one or two episodes, so. I don't know if the Masterpiece version of this does as well, but I still like the design of that gun. I was actually watching the, which one I shared recently on, I think it was on, TF, on the TFYTC page, and on my own page, the um, stop motion videos, and it's showing the Masterpiece version, and then the rifle is exactly the same, and I, I don't know what, I just said, for some reason that particular design of rifle, just looks quite cool. It's a nice design. It's a class, it's a classic design. Classic design. Sorry. Anyway, for those of you who don't even this toy, I don't know how easy he actually is to get hold of now because say he's, the reissue came out in two thousand and six here in the UK, and I'm assuming I don't know if I haven't been actually been to. It. Not breaking. I haven't been to Toys R Us in absolutely ages. I know I'm not sure what that stick of is meant to. Oh, well, stick of is meant to represent. I don't know if that's been reused or not, but pick it up. So nice turn the voice. I like it. I like that. I noticed. That bit I just had there. If you want to spin the waist round to get into bottom mode, you actually have to lift it up. So it's a nice little. Those are quite cool. Those yellow stickers there. Add a bit of some colour because they're quite, quite bland. I think back is black. Um, those ones are quite cool as well, actually. Add some sort of mechanical or sort of technical detail to it. Okay, I know she's not overly fragile, but I'm not going to take a detail on that. Right, of course, I won't focus for some reason. 
so what I do a lot is like red chrome and it's actually been painted onto his head. And as most of us know, but those of you who don't, you probably made a connection anyway. The Autobot symbol. I don't know what's designed first, but Prowl's face was designed. No, sorry, was designed first. Or, or no, saying that, because this is a Diaclone toy. And then when Marvel and Hasbro were the first came up with a design for the Autobot symbol, they say they could use his design as a rough rough design for the Autobot symbol and then G1 Soundwaves for the Decepticon, so anyway. Anyway. Launches into his side of his head. Spell up and his acid pellet gun. Got to do a brain. Yeah. Yeah, so here we go. G one commemorative issue sorry uh, I can't remember sorry sorry oh, but I'm saying it today proud that's what I was trying to say but what about this better see it's detail on his face he does look like a bit of a face when you transform he's got those um stickers on his shoulders so yeah please with him I think he was about 15 20 quid Back that sort of price, because like, 2006, I've got, I think I've got, I just saw him at the time, I'm not going to see him again. It can be fairly hard to get on, I've got all four. I've got him, the him, Skywalk. Who else was in there? I've got to look on the page now, because buggy. Ah, see, I've got Red Alert as well. Ah, oh, hang on, Prowl, Red Alert, Skywalk, Series 4. I know, I didn't get Hoist, but I got Inferno and Trax, and they were Series 5. I think they're the only ones. Yeah, it's the only ones I actually, I actually got out of that series. Yeah, got already got G1 Optimus Prime. Ultra Magnus I'll get at some point. Star Screen I'll not do, I've got a classic version. Yeah, I forgot I bought tracks actually. Tracks in Premier. Inferno I've, I've since sold to Ben, Juice 84. Because that's one he hadn't got, and he likes good G1 stuff a lot more than I'd probably do. So, I might do a review of one of the guys I've just mentioned. Might him actually, yeah. Might choose him. Anyway, I've waffled on for way too long. For those of you wanting more information about the good, good Marvel or G1 cartoon version of Prowl, plenty of detailed information on TF Wiki. I don't think I'm gonna sit in with a side of LT I'll be here for another hour or so because it's quite a bit to take in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, giving me and this guy some of your precious time and I'll catch you later. Bye for now.